with my May Plan With Me video. Even though it's already been done so many times, I really wanted to do a honeybee theme for this month. I have fallen so deep into the Animal Crossing hole like so many other people, and I fell in love with the tiny bees that fly around my flowers. I even made a small bee garden on my island that I am really proud of, and even though I was inspired by Animal Crossing, this theme is just about honeybees. So don't worry if you don't play because there are no Animal Crossing references here. I hope you guys like this theme, and let's jump right into the video! So starting out with my cover page, I saw this super cute bee wall art on Etsy by The Beehive Handmade, and I wanted to recreate it. I started out by coloring everything in with my Tombow dual brush pen markers first. Since the yellow colors are so light, I didn't want them to smudge the black pen. So the exact color numbers will be listed down below, but basically I used a very light yellow, a more bright yellow, a light peachy orange, an amber orange, and a dark golden yellow. I used the darkest yellow to color in the hive, and the bright yellow for the bees. Then I just randomly filled in the little honeycomb shapes with all five of the colors. To outline the doodles, I used my Micron 01 pen and to add a little calendar at the bottom of the page. For the M, I first used my pencil and ruler to make the lines super straight, then I went in with my Tombow Fudonosuke pen to fill it all in, and I went over it a couple times to make sure the black was as opaque as possible. I thought the bees were still missing a little something, so I added in this really pale light blue color to their wings, and even though it's really subtle, it still gives them a nice depth that looks much better than just white. Moving on to the calendar page, I used the same serif font style as the M on my cover, but I decided to doodle a bunch of honey dripping from the top of the letters, which I thought turned out super cute. I added in a bunch of bees around the top with some dotted lines behind them to show that they're flying all around the page. I connected some of them to the text so it almost looked like the bees spelled them out. Then I used all of the yellow markers and alternated between outlining the squares and filling them in, but I was just doing this really randomly. Ever since I tried this layout for my November coffee theme last year, I have been wanting to do this again so badly, and I thought the light colors for this month worked perfectly for it. For the dates, I added little black circles in the bottom right corner of each box and wrote the numbers in with my white Sakura jelly pen. Then I used the amber color to fill in the dripping honey, and I added an extra layer at the bottom to create a bit of shadowing, and I added some white streaks at the top for highlights, and this gave the honey some really nice dimension. I used the same marker to stripe my to-do list section, and I added this little bee-striped drop shadow for an extra pop. Now for my trackers, this is a new layout since I've never had them both on one page before, but I really wanted to add a special spread for this month without creating an extra blank page. So I made it work by only including 6 habits instead of my usual 8 to 9. For my mood tracker, I just doodled in 31 bees flying around the page and only added dotted lines behind some of them so it wouldn't get too cluttered. I colored them in, and my plan is to add two stripes if I'm feeling happy, one thick stripe if my mood is just okay, and I'm filling in a poor little bee completely black if it was a bad day. Hopefully I'll have a lot of nice striped bees this month. And then for my habit tracker, I kept it super simple so it wouldn't clash with my doodle heavy mood tracker. I used a brown marker to write out my habits, and I just used this rectangle layout. 
And that's really it for this tracker. Like I said, super simple, but later on I do add in brown drop shadows to each box for a little bit of extra color. So this next spread I am pretty proud of. I really wanted to make something special on how we can all do our part in saving the bees. To start out with, I drew this cute little banner at the top in front of some honeycomb shapes and a little bee flying off. I was inspired by a badge I saw made by Esper4000, and I thought it would go perfectly with this page. Then I used my five yellow colors for five sections, where I wrote out different things we can all easily do to help save the bees. I chose things that we could do while self-distancing and quarantining during these crazy times. So the first thing is to plant a bee-friendly garden, and I listed a bunch of different plants, fruits, and flowers for some ideas like lavender, thyme, sunflowers, roses, and strawberries. I know the text is really small here, so please check out my Instagram or Pinterest for a close-up shot of everything. The second thing I included was to stop using pesticides and instead use organic options or beneficial insects in your garden instead. The third thing is to leave the dandelions. Apparently a lot of weeds like dandelions and clovers are an important food source for bees. The fourth thing is to build a simple bee bath which is just a shallow bowl of water with some small rocks to let the bees have a safe place to rest while they drink. And the last thing I included was to support your local beekeepers by buying local raw honey. I know a lot of people have been starting to garden more while staying at home, so hopefully this gave you some simple and easy ideas. At the bottom, I included a few facts I found that I thought were important and really shows why we should do what we can to save the bees. Apparently, we've lost 40% of honeybees in the United States alone since 2006, while a third of the food we eat depends on pollinating insects, and 75% of flowering plants need bees. I got these numbers from the Greenpeace, Save Our Bees, and Harvest Lane websites, so hopefully they're all correct, but I hope this helped you all realize how important bees are to us. And now moving on to my weekly spreads, this month started on a Friday, which can be tricky when I don't want to dedicate an entire page for just the first three days of the month. So instead, I love using this layout that lets me fit all 10 days that I need. Each section is 8x10, and I divided the weekends in half since I don't need as much writing space. That left a little room in the top left corner, so I doodled in this cute honey pot with a honey wand on top. Of course, I had to add in a bunch of little bees all around the page, and for the dates, I put them inside these little honeycomb shapes with a striped drop shadow. To outline these sections, I used a brown marker instead of a black pen because I thought it would give a lighter look, and then I just went ahead and colored everything else in. I made the honeypot label the same light blue color as the bee wings, and then I wrote Oh Honey on top with a few tiny flowers and a bee shape as the label. I used my white pen again to add some highlights to the glass, and for my small notes section at the bottom, I used the light peachy color to write out notes in capital letters before going over it with my micron pen in smaller cursive letters with a bee flying off the S. It makes the text look a little more interesting than just using one style. And then finally, using the same micron pen, I just added in some small pollen dots all around the dates. This next week, I kept super simple. I just wrote out the days of the week down the page, using faux calligraphy for the first letter and filling them in with the bright yellow shade. Then I just used the little flying bees as a border for each writing section. This one was so quick to do, but the little bee doodles help make it still look cute. For the third week, I added a bunch of bee-related doodles at the top like some hives, honeycombs, bees, a flower, and a honey pot and wand. And then similar to last week, I just wrote out the days of the week down the page but I used this serif font and I made the lines on the left side into little thicker boxy shapes. I filled the text in with the lightest yellow, highlighted the numbers with the peachy color, and I created the borders with the dark gold. And 
finally, for the last weekly log, I thought I would doodle in a bunch of different honey pot and jar shapes with a beehive note section at the bottom. I colored them all in before writing out the dates on top with my Tambo Fudunosuke brush pen, and I added small highlights in the numbers with my white pen. I wrote out the days of the week on top with the brown marker, and for the notes section, I made sure to include a couple teeny tiny bees flying out of the hive. And that is it for my May plan with me. I am so happy with how this month turned out, and I really hope you all liked it and got some inspiration on how to make your gardens a little more bee friendly. If you have any other tips and tricks, please let us know down below so we can all do our part in saving the honeybees. At the end, I'll be showcasing some amazing recreations of my past spreads, so thank you so much for the tag. If you decide to recreate any of these spreads, please tag me on Instagram at AFCXX3 to be featured in my next video. Please stay safe and healthy, and I will see you all next time. Bye!